Which It Gets It keeps on spreading his nonsense about specular and diffuse reflections, using this nonsense to prove that the Earth must be flat. Let's hear what he has to say. We have something called specular reflections. And if you see like the mountains reflected on the body of water here. And we actually have observations from many dozens of miles away where you see really big mountains reflected off the water. If the surface is not flat, you cannot get a specular reflection. If you see here, there's just a little bit of disturbance in the water and you see that the image is being messed up. Now, if this water was actually bending convexly, you wouldn't be able to get a specular reflection. In order to get a specular reflection, the water has to be flat. And this is because it if not, you'll have a diffused reflection. It'll scatter. You won't be able to get the actual specular reflection coming from the water, so from whatever the object is, to the water to you. Now, light doesn't actually travel, but we perceive it as if it does, and we're not gonna digress. The reflection requires a flat surface to then give you a specular reflection. If it is sloping, bending convexly, or if it's concave, you're going to get major distortion. You cannot get an accurate specular reflection. We have long distance specular reflections on the Earth all over the earth and that shows you that the earth is a plane that that water is flat if you go to like a circus and you have like the clown mirrors or whatever they're called the reason they make you look so distorted is because they're curved and since they're either curved convex or concave it makes you look crazy it gives you very distorted proportions first of all witsit doesn't know the difference between specular and diffuse reflection he doesn't even know what specular reflection or diffuse reflection is. He thinks that it means the difference between an undistorted and a distorted reflection, and it isn't. But we are used to Witsit making these kinds of mistakes, but this argument made me think about the reflection on a curved surface. When a light beam is reflected off of a flat plane, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection, and when that light beam reaches the eye, its reflection can be seen at a certain distance from its origin. <coughs> when that same light beam is reflected off of a curved surface, the point where it touches that surface can be considered an infinite small flat plane, tangent to the curve. And again, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. And when that light beam reaches the eye, its reflection can be seen at a certain distance from its origin, but at a different distance than in the case of the flat plane. The distance of the reflection would be shorter when reflected on a curved surface than when reflected on a flat surface, that is, when the curvature is convex. When I'm watching my computer screens, I see the, this image, a standard image provided by Windows. You see a large rock reflected in the water. You should be able to measure the length of the reflection, were it not that the water is not completely still and the reflected image is heavily distorted. But I knew that there would lie the method to find out whether the reflection was on, on a flat water plane or a curved water plane. I looked up some pictures of mountains at a distance, reflected in still water. I measured the length of the reflection and compared it with the length of the, ref of the reflection when the image just was mirrored vertically, a situation you would have when the reflection was off of a flat water plane. The first image didn't show much of a difference although the reflection was shorter than the mirrored image. The second image gave a much more definitive answer, as did the third. And the fourth. And the fifth. And the sixth. I know it was only a small sample of six, but nevertheless these pictures show that the reflected image is shorter than the reflected object, thus showing that the reflection must not come off of a flat plane. It's always nice when Witsit's false line of reasoning leads to the right evidence that water cannot be flat. 
Ergo, that the earth cannot be flat. <laughs>